Today on The Spot, we've got another triple demo weekend with hands-on demos of Just Cause 2, Aliens vs. Predator, and Darwinia Plus. If that wasn't enough for you, we also catch you up with This Week on PSN and This Week on PC. Throw some cool trivia prizes in and you've got Today on The Spot. Hey everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. It is Saturday, January 30th. I'm your host Chris Waters, joined by Sean McGinnis here on this weekend. What's going on, man? I know, well you and I have been playing a lot of mag lately. Yeah. You're, you've got a legitimate excuse, you're reviewing the game. That's true. I have just been sort of like tagging along, uh -huh. uh, riding your coattails. You've been coming over and watching me do the headshots. Doing and the you've headshots. Been like, I wanna I do like, them too. That looks rad, I'm gonna do that myself. And it is, it's pretty fun. It's pretty rad. I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting up to the point where I can uh, sort of see the battlefield, do command, command structure mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I just made a clan. Yes. Uh, the Glaive Dragons. The Glaive. Uh, we originally started in Dark Sector. Uh huh. A multiplayer. We were really into Condemned 2 multiplayer for a while. That's true. The Glaive Dragons um, have had a sort of a non-traditional. Yes. Uh, you know, but Mag is a little bit more mainstream for them. We'll see how they fare. It is. Uh, so if any anybody else out there wants to join the Glaive Dragons, hit me up on uh, PSN. Sean saves Tokyo. Maybe I'll send you an invite to my clan. It's very prestigious. <laughs> very prestigious, yeah. folks. All right, on with the show. We've got a lot of demos as per usual. Just Cause 2 is a biggie, as well as a couple more to keep your Saturday nice and full. But of course, it's over to Tor Thorson first for the latest headlines. Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot News update for Saturday, January 30th. I'm Tor Thorson. This week, Nintendo issued its earnings report for the nine months ending December 31st, 2009. The period saw the Mario Factory post revenues of 13.06 billion, a decline of 23.1% and net profits of $2.13 billion, down 9.4%. Of greater interest to gamers will be the fact that as of December 31st, over 67.45 million Wiis have been sold worldwide. Wii software hasn't fared too bad either, badly either, with 509.66 million games for the console sold across the globe. Meanwhile, the DS further cemented itself as the all-time best-selling game platform by selling 125.13 million units. A little handheld that could has also done well on the software front, selling a whopping 688.29 million games across the globe. If you crave the sort of ultraviolence that the Wii and DS don't provide much of, you're in luck. Sony has finally announced the launch date for the PlayStation 3 exclusive God of War 3, which is now due out on March 16th. The latest installment in the storied fantasy action series once again follows fallen Sparta, Spartan warrior Kratos as he hacks, slashes, dismembers, decapitates, eviscerates, mutilates, and otherwise does bodily harm to a variety of Greek mythological monsters and deities. In addition to dating God of War 3, Sony also announced that the God of War collection is now just 30 bucks. The compilation includes the first two PS2 God of War games remastered with 720p graphics and added support for the PS3's trophy system. So now for just $90, you can get the whole Kratos trilogy in high def. And what kind of sucker likes to gouge out Cyclops' eyeballs in SD? Please. Well, that's your GameSpot News update for January 30th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. All right, thanks for keeping us updated, Tor. Folks, up next, we're off to a magical land of parachutes and grappling hooks. It's our demo for Just Cause 2. All right, everybody, it is time for your daily demo. I am Sean McInnes, and right now we're going to have a look at daily demo. I am Sean McInnes and right now we're going to have a look at Just Cause 2 courtesy of our good friend George Wright from Square Enix London. George, nice of you to drop by. Thank you for having me by. <laughs> yeah, our pleasure as always. So uh, Just Cause 2, give us the quick rundown. What is, what is this game all about? So Just Cause 2 is set in uh, this island called Panau in Southeast Asia. Okay. It's a beautiful place, got different climate zones, snow, desert, tropical. But on the island, there's these rebel gangs warring on the streets, mm -hmm. and it's also run by this evil dictator called Panay, who's oppressing the people on the island. So um, you've got to go to this island to find Tom Sheldon, your former CEO, okay. and this sits off a chain of events. So this is uh, one of the agency missions, which is one of the story missions of the game. As you can see, I'm in a, an agency helicopter. This game is all about, well, I wasn't one. <laughs> this is all about vertical gameplay. So I've got yeah. my helicopter, and I've got my parachutes. 
from here I can actually use my grapple to slingshot around the environment and stay up in the air while raining death from above with my rocket launcher. Yeah, it, it definitely takes some talent to navigate with a parachute and fire a rocket launcher at the same time. So this game is obviously pretty over the top in terms of uh, the action going on, right? Definitely over the top. We're all about uh, you know, the, the freedom, the big stunts, the fast cars, the fast jets, mm -hmm. and those gunships which you just saw. So let's go back to those two main tools, the, uh, the grapple hook and the parachute. Uh, the grapple hook is it's a pretty all-purpose tool. You can do all sorts of things with it, right? Well, there's two main uses to, to the grapple hook. The first one being moving around the environment really mm -hmm. quickly. When you're grappling around, it's hard for them to target you. But more importantly and more fun is the actual using the grapple in combat. So you can you know, pull people like I just did over there um, towards you, juggle them with the guns. You can pull them off ledges. You can uh, grapple people to any object in the world. So grapple a person to a car, oh, as you can and, see there. And right now it looks like you're sabotaging this poor guy by attaching him to a moving car. Yeah, uh, this never gets old. <laughs> no, no, never. Oh, oh. now he just clipped <laughs> the building too. And he goes flying off, out of his misery. And, and crunch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, so one of the things that we saw popping up on the screen earlier was this uh, chaos label. Uh, what, what's chaos about in this game? Chaos is like the unlocking mechanism of the game. Mm -hmm. The more chaos you generate, uh, is, well, the, if you generate chaos, you will unlock missions in the game. So you can do that within missions by blowing up these military and government objects in the bases, yeah. and also outside of missions. But also completing the missions themselves will earn you a lot of chaos. Once you earn a lot of chaos, area of influence on the island expands, which allows you to do more missions and then open up the next agency mission. Okay, yeah, it looks like you just unlock some chaos by going for some optional extra damage by, you know, destroying that radio tower and, exactly. and whatnot. So there's, there's always an incentive to be like a total jerk, right? Definitely. <laughs> I like that kind of game. It seems like it's pretty much designed for me. Um, <laughs> as far as the, uh, you know, the weapons and vehicles in the game, um, are you going to start out like pretty limited and then unlock stuff as you go along or is it all, all there at the very beginning? The, the vehicles which you can heavy drop in the black markets that, that's where you can upgrade your weapons and your mm -hmm. vehicles. They are limited in the beginning, they are, they are locked by chaos. So as you create more chaos on the island, you'll unlock more black market items. Um, but you can venture around the world and find vehicles parked, like at bases, for example, that tank. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go into the city, you're going to find really cool sports cars and sport bikes. And then in the desert, you'll find a lot of like 4x4s and ATVs and off-road bikes. That, uh, the grapple hook looks like, uh, there's just so much stuff you can do with that thing. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the beauty of this is, you know, you'll be playing the game for an hour and then mm -hmm. you'll think, what if I try this? You know, why don't I try and grapple this guy to the back of a boat and you know, see if he goes water skiing. And then you do that and you see the guy getting towed behind the boat. It's, it's just incredibly satisfying. Definitely over the top. <laughs> over the top. All right, uh, George, the game looks great. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you for uh, me. So that is your guys' look at Just Cause 2 and now on with the rest of the show. All right, so that was your look at Just Cause 2, a game that will be coming out to the PlayStation 3 in the distant future. Now, it's a look at the short-term horizon with This Week on PlayStation Network. This Week on PlayStation Network. Closing out January, we find a fat amount of content coming our way. Starting with downloadable games, we have Hustle Kings. It's your job to hustle your way to the top and the first billiard simulator to come out on the PlayStation 3. With true-to-life physics and stunning photorealistic graphics and lighting, you'll be sure to embrace your inner Paul Newman. Pick up Hustle Kings for $9.99. Up next is Thexter Neo. First out on the PC in 1985 and recently re-released on the PSP in October of last year, you play as a mech that can transform into a jet. Fight your way through some side-scrolling madness with revamped graphics, a novice mode, and six-player online races. Thexter Neo is yours for $9.99. And for downloadable PSP games this week, we have Dracula Undead Awakening, Pinball Dreams, Route 66, and Deflector. New in the game's demo department, we've got a demo for the winner of GameSpot's Reader Choice Best of 2009, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. We've also got demos for Texter Neo and Vancouver Olympics Winter Games. Taking a look at game add-ons, we have new content for Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, the PlayStation Heroes Pack. This pack contains seven character skins from Infamous, Killzone 2, and the Resistance franchise for use in Uncharted 2's online multiplayer modes. This pack will run you 4 dollars 
Next is an add-on for Assassin's Creed 2, Sequence 12, The Battle for Forlee. The Battle of Forlee expands the Assassin's Creed 2 experience by delivering a missing piece of the storyline. Uncover new depths to the historical conspiracy by gaining access to six challenging new memories. This content is a steal at $3.99. Tracking over to game videos, we find new videos for White Knight Chronicles, exploring the character customization and the online experience, four new videos for Mag's acquisition, domination, sabotage, and suppression modes, and a ton of new developer diaries for Dante's Inferno. We've also got new trailers for Hustle Kings, Madden NFL Arcade, and Smash Cards. Well, that should top your week off, but be sure to check back with us next Saturday for an all new This Week on the PlayStation Network. All right, folks, we're back, and up next we got a demo for Darwinia Plus, a new game coming to the Xbox Live Arcade. Some of you folks may be familiar with the Darwinia series. Uh, you may recognize these little guys, which will be given away during our trivia section coming up a little later in the show. These dudes are pretty neat. That one's, that one's pretty neat, the yellow one that you've got there. I prefer the green one because it comes with a sweet cloaking shield. Look at this thing. It's invisible like the Predator. It, can, um, it looks like I chucked one of these really hard through. Oh, no! I'm dying <laughs> slowly, but I look cool. I'm dying. But it's, it's totally... What? Green what? screen it's, fun, a, Yeah, folks. green Sorry, screen. Sorry, these won't actually uh, appear to be magical in your home once you get them there, but they're cool anyways. And uh, to see what else is cool, let's go check out this game right now. Demo time. Hey everybody, Brian Eckberg here with your daily demo. We're taking a look at Darwinia for Xbox Live. I'm here with Mark Morris. Hey Brian. Mark, thank you for being here. We appreciate that. It's a that. pleasure, an absolute pleasure. So, so here we are in, in the world here. You can see that's Dr. Sepulveda at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, he's talking to you about um, Darwinia and saying that it would be great if uh, you could come and, and help us out. And you're sort of getting your, your first look at the world here. Because it's running inside a computer, it looks really weird. You know, mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be kind of photorealistic. So the main uh, unit that you use within Darwinia is the squad. So Chris will create a, uh, a squad now. Um, and you can just see just off camera to the, to the left there's the virus. Mm. So these are kind of like um, your, your antivirus program, but they're kind of antivirus with attitude. You know, this is you sort of, um, you've got lasers and um, <laughs> You basically, this is the way that uh, you, you, you basically control the, uh, the campaign mode. Okay. So it's quite kind of action oriented, you know, it's um, kind of third person running these, these guys through. So you have direct control of them, they're not you controlling do. themselves. You do, okay. yeah, you have direct control and, um, and the lasers, uh, you're controlling them with the, the left thumbstick, lasers are on the right. It's mm -hmm. really, uh, it took us a long time to get it right, mm. but um, it, it works very well. So, as well as the squads, one of the other key units that you've got is the engineer that you can see um, just off screen there, uh, kind of heavily sort of Tron inspired, you know, mm. you'll see a lot of references to kind of 80s films and 80s video games <laughs> that, you know, that we really enjoyed when right. we were playing this. But Darwinia has kind of become broken, mm -hmm. so you need to use the engineers to restore everything back to its initial, uh, initial state. So the, um, that little, yeah, Chris has started a bit of a fire over there. That little um, kind of strange device that you're seeing uh, sort of in the middle of the screen is, is an incubator. Mm -hmm. Now at the moment you can see it's flashing red at the top and that means it's not working, it's under virus control. But your, um, your officers, sorry, the engineers are there now reprogramming the, uh, that particular unit, basically bringing it back online for the player. Now, within Darwinia, all the creatures, I guess a little bit spiritual here, so stop me if I get a bit <laughs> no, too weird, fine. right? <laughs> but all of the creatures uh, leave these little souls behind, and you can see them kind of dotted around the, yes. the landscape there. They're the souls of the virus that Chris just, um, just, just wiped out. And the engineers will take those, uh, those souls, feed them into the incubator, and you can see popping out at the bottom of the incubator now the Darwinians. Mm. So this is our first introduction to, uh, to these little guys. Now, the Darwinians are really uh, considered to be alive within this, within this context. So you can't kind of interact with them directly. You know, that would be like having some kind of mind control. And that's not the point. You know, the right. point is, is these guys have kind of evolved. But you can give them kind of instructions and you can, you can say to, you can upgrade them. So this one's now become an officer. I see. And what he'll do is he will uh, stamp down a route for the Darwinians and all of the other Darwinians that are born will look at that and go, oh, right, okay, better follow and, and better do what I'm told. Mm -hmm. Officers are really important later on. Darwinians are kind of the key resource. They operate all of the machinery and equipment mm. uh, within Darwinia. Mm -hmm. So um, you need to use them uh, you know, to, to kind of move around the map and things. Mm -hmm. um, you can see as well uh, uh, these 
a virus comes in many different forms. Mm. You've seen that kind of really simple, like 2D basic virus, but we've also got, um, here we're looking at a centipede. Again, that's kind of based on the video game of the same name. So hopefully right. Chris will bring his, um, his squad around and uh, start taking out the centipede. And so Chris will, will, will take out that uh, centipede now and you'll see as he does it, um, it will break down into uh, more centipedes. All right, well, there's certainly a lot to the, to the you guys, you guys went all out with this. Yeah, we did, we did. We, it took us a long time, but um, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot in the package. So uh, it takes a little while to, uh, to wrap your mind around, but uh, I think it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, well, when is Darwinian for Xbox Live? February the 10th. February the 10th, 10th. just yeah, a couple weeks. Long, Mark, long. Mark, thank you for being yeah, here, we appreciate it. It's a real pleasure. It. Chris, thank you for playing the game for us, making us look good, we appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, there you go, there's your daily demo of Darwinia. All right, we're going to put these little fellas away for a minute and head over to the PC. Marco Martinez has got his weekly grab bag of PC goodness. Let's check it out right now. This week on PC, we have Interstellar Marines Bullseye. This is how bees work and your patches of the week. Interstellar Marines Bullseye is a first-person training shooter and is a demo of the full game Interstellar Marine, which is still in production. Although the site doesn't require you to sign up for a free account, Without one, you will only be able to try out the first three levels. The game offers a leveling up system that includes increased difficulty, added weapon upgrades, and stage progression. The graphics are superb, and it's recommended that you play on Firefox browser for optimal gameplay, although you can play on other browsers. This is how Bees Work is a simple 8-bit game where you play as a cloud planting flowers in the ground so that bees can pollinate them. Once the bees pollinate each flower, they release seeds into the ground that sprout bushes and trees creating a lush and large forest. The game has a quick install and great if you have 10 minutes to play. You can find this game on the GameSpot downloads page. Now for your patches of the week. James Cameron's Avatar, the game, has been updated to version 1.02 and addresses game crashes, direct X, 10 errors, and more. Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising has been updated to version 1.02. Patch includes improved multiplayer stability, bug fixes, added Overwatch DLC, and more. Mass Effect 2 has released a Crossfire Hotfix patch that allows users with the ATI Crossfire setups to use anti-aliasing, which was not available on the retail version of the game. Read the README files for all patches. You can find these patches on the GameSpot downloads page. I'm Marco Martinez, and that's it for this week on PC. Folks, because it's the weekend, we're cramming in extra trivia giveaways that are related to our next demo, which is Aliens vs. Predator. Sean, tell us a little bit about it. That's right, Chris. We actually took a special approach with this one. Since you can play as all three races in the game, you've got Aliens, you've got the Predator, you've even got the Colonial Marines, we shot an extra long omnibus demo, split it into three different, uh, three different sections, and we're gonna get to that first one right now. The first species we're gonna check out today is Aliens, but make sure to check out the next few shows, and you can see the other species in the game. So let's roll with the Aliens demo of Aliens vs. Predator. <laughs> Hey everybody, it is Ricardo and I'm sitting here with Tim Jones from Rebellion and he has brought us a buffet of nerd sci-fi goodness. So, what game are you showing off? Uh, we're showing off Aliens vs Predator today, which is um, the latest iteration of the Aliens vs Predator game franchise, of which we've done two versions before at Rebellion. The version on the Jaguar in the mid-90s and then the, uh, the version on PC that came out back in 1999. And again, like those previous versions, you get to play from all three different perspectives, the Alien, the Predator and the Marine. Most excellent. So, to make everybody happy, because we don't want to show favoritism, we're going to be basically running you through all three of them. So today we're being a little biased and we're showing you the aliens. So we're going to jump right into it. So this is the beginning of the alien campaign, and as you'd expect, it starts out with somebody getting horribly eviscerated. So take us through what's going on right now. Okay, well, we're on a planet called BG-386 here, where the, uh, the Weyland-Yutani oh. evil corporation has uh, set up a colony. They've discovered some ancient uh, predator ruins, which they've been excavating, and in the process, they've uncovered some alien eggs. And, uh, and they're putting them to good use. Yeah, exactly. They've been experimenting, they're um, birthing some aliens, and uh, that's where the alien player comes into, uh, into the story. Uh, you're witnessing your own uh, birth here, and uh, your subsequent escape, which the, uh, the player gets to um, do themselves. All right, so now we've apparently grown up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a flash cut. It's true. 
Uh, so just yesterday, it seems like we were bursting out of somebody's chest, and now we're in stocks. So talk to us about what we can do now as an alien now that we're full grown and have our claws and our adult teeth. Okay, well, uh, once you've uh, learned the basics here, as you're being taken through the, uh, the tutorial Let's elements, uh, you can crawl on any surface. You can, you can walk up walls, on the ceiling, uh, you can move with frightening speed, uh, and you can also leap from surface to surface like with, uh, with real ease. We've got a, a little targeting reticule there in the middle of the screen, which always indicates which way the floor is to help you with your orientation. But it also shows you whether you're hidden in darkness or light or if indeed a, uh, a surface ahead of you is within range for you to be able to leap straight to it. Um, so you've got like a, that level of agility, which is kind of unprecedented in games, um, but is a really, really empowering uh, ability. Um, but it's absolutely essential to the alien to have that level of agility because you don't carry weapons or guns of any kind. So uh, you are essentially the weapon yourself. You have your claws, your tail, your teeth and it's up to you to close the distance to your prey. And once you get there, well, then, you know, your prey's in trouble. And so you mentioned the light and dark aspect mm -hmm. of it, and he seems to be kind of hanging out in shadow. But we can also, there's this vision thing happening, so mm -hmm. can you explain to us what alien vision is? Okay, well, I mean, the alien has a, uh, a unique way of perceiving the world. His senses are very powerful. I mean, it's obviously left somewhat ambiguous in the movies as to whether he's got eyes or not, but, um, in the game, uh, we've made sure that you can uh, clearly see your prey, even through walls. Uh, so you can see the pheromone outline there, uh, which actually changes color depending on how, how, how much of a threat your target is. Like it's green if they're unarmed, they're red if they're armed. Um, but you can also see in the darkness wherever you are as well. You've got, uh, you've got ways of uh, basically, no matter how dark it is, you can still make out the environment around you, which gives you uh, a definite advantage against the AI, which is, um, well, when they're in the dark, they are blind, but you're not. So talk to us about the, the story and how you kind of fit into it, because these are basically three different kind of interweaving stories. Mm. What are we doing? Why are we, why are we in a bad mood killing people? Well, I mean, wouldn't you be if you were uh, being experimented on in the laboratory? Maybe. I think it's, you know, it's pretty fair that these guys are, um, they're treating you pretty badly and it's, it's natural that you want to escape, that you want to free your queen. And ultimately, as far as you're concerned as an alien, it's about survival. It's about the survival of your hive, of, uh, of you know, the rest of the aliens. And uh, in terms of the, the general story for the rest of the game and how it relates to the other species, it's essentially your actions at the beginning of the alien campaign that kick off the story for the others because the outbreak of the aliens from the laboratory leads to the, uh, the overrunning of the colony and that's the point at which the marines come in to try and try and rescue some people and when the predators go in to try and kind of hunt down everybody that's uh, kind of um, trespassing on your uh, sacred hunting ground. It's like one big murder party that everybody's invited to. Yeah, you could look at it that way. All right, very nice. All right, there you go. That is your look at the alien campaign in Aliens vs. Predator. Be sure and come back off for the next two Today on the Spots, so where we're going to be checking out the Marines and the Predators. So until then, let's get back to the show. All right, folks, the time has come for Sean and I to part ways with our adorable little foam Darwinian friends. We're giving these away. If you can answer a trivia question, we're also giving away signed Darwinia Plus art books with all sorts of good information about the game, the series, and uh, did I mention they were signed by the developers? Pretty sweet. So, you want to win some Darwinia Plus stuff? Answer the following question. What year was Darwinia first released on the PC? And for our second wave of Saturday trivia, here's Sean McInnes. That's right, Chris. Uh, for our second trivia question, we're going into the AVP universe, specifically the Predator half of it. So the question that I've got for you guys is this one. Name the star of the movie Predator 2. Not one, Predator 2. One of the greatest actors in the history of Hollywood, if you ask me. So if you think you know the answer, use the answer trivia module on the page here, or send an email to onthespot at gamespot.com. Chris? Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna be kind of sorry to see these guys go. They're kind of adorable. They are really adorable. Really um, uh, I'm not gonna mind seeing them go because that means that you don't get to throw those at my face anymore. <laughs>
That's true. That I will miss those times. Silver lining. Uh, I meant to ask you, how did? Uh, how, what was the result of your whole fishing for? Uh, fishing for compliments yeah, on fishing, the last show? Yeah, you guys were really casting. <laughs> it was. Uh, Brian and I were reaching really hard to try to get like some trawling, compliments. From the media. Like long line Absolutely. trawling. Absolutely. <laughs> Brian actually wore a tie on the last show because he was so desperate for nice things to be said about him in the comments and section. And the results? It was overwhelmingly positive. The kids love us. The kids love Brian. Uh, it was wonderful, and I want to thank you guys for all the wonderful things that you said about us. Um, don't feel obliged to say nice things about Chris, though, because, frankly, we all know he's not cute. And I want to thank you personally because your compliments boosted Sean's self-esteem enough that I didn't have to hear his silent weeping at his desk around 4, 4.30 every day. It, it's laughing. It's not I was silent. laughing. It's very... I can... Okay, Anyways. fair enough, fair enough. Folks, that's gonna about do it for us today. Tune in next week for a whole slate of awesome demos. We got Metro 2033, we got Split Second, more Aliens vs. Predator, and Super Monkey Ball on the Wii with the balance board compatibility. Actually a pretty cool fit, now you're gonna wanna see that one. So, for everyone here on the GameSpot staff, I'm Chris Waters. And I'm Sean McGinnis. Have a great weekend. I'm, I'm gonna, this is happening right now. I'm still juggling them. You just That's can't how see a jerk they're juggles. They're all green. Oh. Uh. <laughs> you juggle like a jerk. I can't juggle these things. I could juggle some balls. <laughs> I bet you can. You guys are so easy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right down the time code for yeah. when he says balls. <laughs>